Welcome to the Today in History channel, in today's video we will talk about the day. December 6, 1921, Signature of the Anglo-Irish Treaty After the First World War, the United Kingdom was still recovering from the losses suffered and was not prepared to start another war in Ireland. Furthermore, the United States would not have allowed it. The British passed the Irish Government Act, a law that divided the country into two separate political entities, Southern Ireland and Northern Ireland, each with its own parliament, the first being for the 26 southern counties and the second for six of the nine counties that made up Ulster. The United Kingdom had already recognized a limited form of self-government for Ireland. In July 1921, a truce was signed and negotiations immediately began to reach a political agreement. An Irish delegation, led by Eamon de Valera, Michael Collins and Arthur Griffith, traveled to London to deal directly with the British cabinet. De Valera left London making it clear that no final agreement should be signed without being read, analyzed, and approved in advance by his government in Dublin. On December 6, 1921, the division of Ireland was formalized in a document known as the Anglo-Irish Treaty. Signed on Downing Street after months of tense and exhausting talks, he recognized the 26 counties in southern Ireland the right to call themselves Irish Free State. Technically, this treaty guaranteed the sovereignty of the Free State over the whole of Ireland, including Northern Ireland, provided that, within a month, the six northern counties so decided. But they chose not to join the Free State immediately. The act of dividing the island was quite controversial, as was the fact that members of the Free State Parliament had been forced to take an oath of allegiance to the King of England. Many Republicans did not accept that Irish delegates had signed the treaty without Dublin's final approval. Representing the views of the majority of the IRA, de Valera refused the treaty. It sparked a heated debate over its approval in the Irish cabinet, but in the vote, de Valera and his faction lost by a single vote. He was also approved by a narrow margin of votes in favor in the Dale Irish Parliament and de Valera resigned his post. The Republican dissident group of Sinn Féin, led by de Valera, demanded the resumption of the struggle against the United Kingdom and started a campaign against the provisional government, which meant a real civil war. Republicans refused to acknowledge the authority of the New Dale and proclaimed their own government. They intensified their attacks against the Irish Free State, causing hundreds of casualties in both factions. Meanwhile Dale, chaired by Cosgrave, drafted a constitution that established a bicameral legislature, Dale Aaron, Lower House of Parliament, and Sinead Aaron, Upper House or Senate, approved in October 1922, after its approval by the British Parliament, it went into operation on December 6. The Irish Free State joined the League of Nations in 1923, and, once the Westminster Statute was ratified, 1931, Ireland had the power to legislate outside the United Kingdom's area of influence. De Valera and the Republicans ended their boycott after the August 1927 elections and entered Dale through the Fianna Fáil party. Cosgrave's party lost power in the February 1932 elections, and de Valera became president of the government, with a program of phasing out British influence. If you like the video of a force subscribing to the channel, like, comment and share. To receive new videos, see you next time.